Okay, so I thought I could share some curriculum picks with you guys for next year. I'm going to try and keep this uh, quick, not very wordy if I can, <laughs> um, but I will answer questions if you have them. Um, just always remember that I don't think there's a right way to pick curriculum. You always just have to do what's best for your family. This is um, how my family and I enjoy learning together. So I'm going to start with our family subjects. These are the subjects that we will do all together at some point in the week. Um, and then we'll go from there. For Bible, I picked Who is Jesus? 40 pictures to share with your family. Here's my plan with this. Um, it comes with a picture and a devotion, and on the back side, there's reflection questions. Um, they also have a Bible reference right here, and some of the scripture references are pretty lengthy. So my plan is to read a devotion and then spend a few days in the scriptures reading the actual Bible reference that they give. Um, there's also a key verse, so if we wanted to do some memorization, I might use the key verse that's in here as well. I try to read poetry to my kids each day. This is something that we just really enjoy doing together. We don't really go in depth with it. We just read it together. Sometimes we'll talk about it, sometimes we don't. Um, I pulled off something that I already had on my shelf and we haven't really used. It's called Favorite Poems Old and New. It has categories and one of the categories is actually, uh, let me show you, little things that creep and crawl and swim and sometimes fly. And it kind of goes along with the science that we're doing, so um, I can read poems in there um, or any other ones that they have in here as well. Next is picture study. This is something we do only once a week. Um, I'm actually alternating picture study and composer study so that I'm not doing them both at the same time. I'm just not ready for that yet. Um, but last, at the end of last year, we used these from Simply Charlotte Mason and it was really wonderful. However, now that I know that it works, I think I can kind of do my own thing. So um, I realized that you can order just the prints from that website. So that saves me eight or nine bucks. And then I found a great book to go along with it. So we'll read a little bit. This is a pretty hefty book. Um, but we'll read a little bit of the book while we study the picture each week. So I think that'll work out really great. We're gonna do Michelangelo, and then we're gonna do Leonardo da Vinci. And so those are the two goals I have for this first semester. For composer study, I'm keeping it really simple. I wrote a blog post on how we do this recently, so I can share that with you. But I really wanted to link the composers with our history studies, but I just felt more comfortable picking some names that I knew. So I have two that we've picked and my goal is to check out books from the library about the composer and then we'll use YouTube or something online to listen to their music. And so that's an, another once a week thing and we'll do it for about five or six weeks. Okay, next is science and I've shared this before. We are using Zoology One, Flying Creatures of the Fifth Day by Apologia. Um, I'm super excited about this. I wanted something to just guide me Last year I did science and history on my own. I made my own units and I felt like science kind of got left behind. So I wanted something that I could just follow. Now I have decided that I will not read every single word and every single page in this book. My goal is to look at the lesson and we're gonna take that and let that be our unit. So for example, there's a lesson on butterflies. So then for a week or two, we'll look at butterflies. I can read what I like about butterflies from here, and then I'll check out books from the library about butterflies as well. So this is more of just a guide to help us um, learn more about the topic. Okay, last is history, and this is the one that I get so excited about because I have just had so much fun learning history with my kids. I like making my own history units. Um, it's just something that really brings me joy. And this semester, we're gonna be doing the Renaissance and Reformation. So I found these great books online. Um, it's called, this one's called The Renaissance Artist. It's by Nomad Press, and it's just about, um, certain people in that time period and so this is kind of my guide and then we'll study each of those people using good books from the library so I'm super pumped about this um, I've got artist thinkers um, there's an inventors one I don't have that one yet and there's an explorers one um, so we're gonna do that for Renaissance I have plans to do a Shakespeare unit as well as a Reformation unit I'm gonna do the one from brighter day press Okay, I lied, I wanted to share about our read-alouds as well. Um, but mostly because I make our read-alouds correlate with our 
history studies and our science studies, so I'm excited about that. Um, I actually don't have all the books, so I can't sit here and show you everything because I get them from the library as we get to them. Um, so I do have one I can show you, but I'm just gonna list them here. So um, we're gonna start the year with Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. Um, this book is, there. the kids are at the museum and they come across some work from Michelangelo, so I thought that would be perfect. Um, we're gonna do uh, Merlin Missions. This is Monday with the Mad Genius. This is Leonardo da Vinci. Um, a couple great books I saw recommended online that we're gonna try. One is The Shakespeare Stealer and The Monk Who Shook the World. Um, and then if we need another one before the semester's over, I've got another Merlin Mission one in mind and it's Moonlight on the Magic Flute about Mozart. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna be talking about my upcoming fourth grader next. We are using Apology of Math level four for her math and we are supplementing it with subtraction facts that stick and we're gonna, we've done addition, we're gonna do multiplication and division facts next. Here's what's really cool. Um, I did a look through of this math a while back and um, I saved it on my YouTube channel if you're interested, but um, each unit comes with skills practice and they tell you what you should be practicing on your own while you're completing the chapters. Now, the skills practice for this one says adding, subtracting large numbers and multiplication facts. Well, guess what? We're gonna get all of that with this. So um, that's kind of what I'm using for my skills practice to go along with this. So um, that'll keep it easy, simple, and um, fun to do. For language arts, we kind of do our own thing. I have eliminated an all-in-one language arts curriculum and it's been amazing. Um, we use our read-alouds, the novels that we read together, and we do our copy work spelling, writing, dictation, um, and even some grammar practice using those read-alouds. We also use Fix-It Grammar. Last year she started this nose tree level and um, we're doing it once a week right, right now, so she'll just continue using it daily uh, when we start up and then we'll probably pick it up with the next level after that. One more thing about language arts, I have a goal this semester to give her a couple of independent projects. She reads on her own every night, but I wanted to kind of do a little bit more where she's reading and kind of doing something with it. So she had so much fun doing a biography paper last year and asked if she could do it again. So I'm gonna let her pick somebody from our Renaissance time period to do a biography paper. And then as long as that goes well and that independent project kind of happens, um, then I'm gonna give her a book report to do as well. So it's gonna kind of be her own thing, how she, she'll read, maybe do a written narration or something, and then kind of come up with her own way to present it to us. So um, we'll see how that goes. That's kind of gonna be a go with the flow thing, but I just kind of want to challenge her to do a little independent project on her own. Next, we're gonna talk about my upcoming second grader. We are using Math with Confidence. We're finishing up this first grade one and we should start our second grade one when we start our school year um, in July. For language arts, we started Logic of English last year. We made it all the way through Foundations A and we got about halfway through Foundations B. I really love this program because it encourages you to go at the pace of your child and I'm all about that. This has been wonderful. So we're gonna continue doing that. We'll pick up where we left off and then we will go from there. Okay, last thing I promise, I'm gonna say a little bit about my preschooler. I have a very laid back approach to preschool. Um, it's gonna be just a hodgepodge of things. Um, if you watched all my family subject videos, then you can see that she is going to be learning alongside us so many different subjects, picture study, composer study, history, science. Um, she'll be right there along with us. And um, so then, I, you know, we'll do Play-Doh mats and we'll do puzzles and we'll, um, I've got an alphabet workbook. I, I think I have an explode the code that she can work on. So um, it's really just gonna kind of be a go with the flow with her um, and she'll just be kind of learning alongside us as well. So I think it's gonna be a really good year for her. I'm cleaning up my school room and realized I forgot to share my handwriting. My second grader is going to be learning cursive this year. She's super excited. I picked new American cursive, um, mostly because I like the way the cursive looks and the lessons look easy to do and easy enough to shorten um, if I wanted to. So that's what we'll be using. 